Well, good morning. We're now into September and we're now into a new season of the church calendar. But as it's Wednesday, once again, welcome to Thought for the Week. This morning, I would like to talk about consequences. And, you know, the Bible has much to say about the consequences we make. Yes, those consequences of our desires, our thoughts, our choices, our words, our actions. And this is true both in this life and the life to come. For what you do as to your actions really matters. Perhaps we should look at God's word by way of illustration. Psalm 115 verse 8 says, Those who make idols become like them, and so do all who trust in them. Galatians 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, he will also reap. Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Acts 17, 31. God has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And finally, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. In other words, we cannot escape this subject of consequences as we read God's word. For the Bible clearly and repeatedly warns us so that each of us is without excuse. I think there is a sense within us where we know too well that every day each of us harvests what we have previously planted and we sow what we will one day reap. For surely God knows that we are now experiencing what we are experiencing is so often directly connected to the actions we have taken. It is sometimes a chilling rem reminder that all who have ever lived will stand before the throne of God one day and there be required to give an account for the way they have lived. And yes, we will all hear God's final proclamation as to ourselves, as to the place of our eternal destiny. For yes, and for sure, the Bible has much to say about love and forgiveness and joy and life and light. But we must never ignore the dark side of the consequences and the penalties for unrepentant spiritual adultery. This morning you might be viewing this thought for the week and thinking, well, well, this is not a very comforting devotional, is it, Gary? But actually, it is. By providing us with such clear teaching and, and consequences and judgment, God both warns and comforts us. For in many ways, the Bible functions as a moral alarm system as it screeches louder and flashes brighter than all the seductive voices that would woe us into spiritual infidelity and rebellion. For be assured we are all in need of constant and powerful reminders that we do not live life in an open universe where anything we desire is possible and everything is potentially beneficial. And maybe this alarm system is in the Word of God should be our most immense comfort, especially on those occasions when it is ringing louder than ever. And why comfort? Because by warning us, God is repeatedly extending his unconditional love and mercy and forgiveness and grace towards us, even though we are disloyal towards him. Think of it this way. If God really, all he wanted to do was to judge us, he wouldn't need to warn us. He would just immediately convict us. Yet through the scriptures, as they speak as to the Lord's judgment and holiness, he offers us one more chance to listen, one more chance to see, to confess, to repent and accept his righteousness. And we can actually take great comfort in knowing that God keeps an accurate eternal record. For ultimately the universe as in the new heavens and the new earth, will be made just because God himself is just. 
The final judgment assures us that Christ will settle all accounts and will right every wrong. And that's, as such, we can take great comfort that once more, once again, the scripture is there to warn us and has reminded us. Forgiving grace is a necessity for each of us if we are to receive eternal peace and an, and, uh, an eternal home with the Lord. This is his precious gift. Both has, have been offered to us freely. The one who provides these gifts is simultaneously a righteous judge and a tender saviour. And in his righteousness and his holiness, he will not forsake his moral requirement to deliver his mercy. And he will not forsake his mercy to be a judge. Be reminded this morning, there is no excuse and consequences really do matter. And we finish there. God bless. Keep safe for now. Catch you again. Bye bye.